Okay, so for this review, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set up an account and I'm going to start it from scratch so that you guys can see everything that you need to do. You'll see what the dashboard looks like. You'll be actually able to see inside the um, Mint dashboard and see what the what the inside looks like. So right here on the home page, go ahead and uh, sign up free. And once it loads, we'll go ahead and get signed up. <laughs> so I went ahead and I skipped the actual login screen so that um, I keep the login credentials confidential. And once you've entered your email, uh, they, they would like you to use your phone number, but you don't have to. Once you've entered your email and you've entered a phone number, uh, it'll take you to this next screen. Uh, and it asks you what country you're in. If you pull this down, as you can see, Mint is only available in the United States and Canada. So you choose the country and then um, go ahead and enter a zip code. So I'm just going to enter a zip code that is close to my area. And we'll go ahead and go in there. And so once you've done that, voila, it brings you to this main screen which is where you can go ahead and set up connections to your bank account. And as you can see, it has uh, several of the main bank accounts already listed. Let's say you don't have one of these bank accounts and <clears throat> you wanted to link it to uh fidelity let's see if, we, if they can if they have fidelity there you go it has fidelity investments um pretty much any bank any major bank account in the united states or any major banking institution in the united states and canada you'll be able to find it and so what you'll do is you'll go ahead and you'll select your account. So if you had, let's say you had a Wells Fargo, go ahead and hit Wells Fargo and it will ask you to link your account to Mint. So you log into your banking account and the balances that are in that account will now be connected to, to your link account, to your, uh, to your linked account and you'll be able to see the balances that are in that account with uh, with mint uh, of course there's an option right here for those that no longer want to use early mint if you wanted to delete it for some reason you can go ahead right here and delete your account so basically once you've linked your account You'll be able to get in and and see your activity uh, for this purposes of this video i'm not going to link anything in this what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to an old mint account that i have that i had set up and um, this is just dummy dummy accounts that i had set up back in the day as you can see it says um this information is three years old and it was linked to a local credit credit union. There were no credit cards or anything linked to it, but it gives you an idea of what the Mint dashboard looks like. So right on the main main page, as you can see right here, you have alerts. If there are any alerts with any of your accounts, anything that goes on with it, uh, it'll show up over here. If you've set up bill pay, uh, it will have all your bills listed right here. You click the see my bills, and it'll have your uh, it'll have your bills listed. Uh, it'll have the payment payment dates for those bills. Uh, the free free credit score they they offer a credit score score option. Remember um, that Mint is now owned by Intuit, and so they've been incorporating a lot of different. Um, 
they've been incorporating a lot of, of, of different functionality in it so you can get your credit score if you have um, set up a budget so let's go ahead in here and see if um, look at the budget options and um, it's got different budget categories right here as you can see any pretty much anything and everything that you could possibly want so let's say here we go on the utilities you want to say every month um, bills and utilities so let's say your bills and utilities are something like 400 you go ahead and save that now as you can see it shows up under that category and so it's it's pretty um, pretty intuitive it's pretty user friendly and it starts listing over here so if if this account was active and it was actually linked to a bank account it would show me what what the income is what the available spending cash is and it would take out that the um, the 400 and then it will go ahead and uh, tally up whatever's left over so if you're one of those people that needs to to get some help tracking your your spending and that kind of stuff then um this is a pretty it's pretty it's a pretty neat feature and it, it shows you right here what what the month is and um we'll go ahead and look at at the goals tab and as you can see it gives you different options for goals so you can have pay off credit card debt pay off loans save for an emergency uh, save for retirement, buy a house, buy a car, save for college, take a trip, improve my home, create a custom goal. So let's say I want to go ahead in here and I want to create a custom goal. Okay, custom goal, and we'll look at the category. What category do I want? Let's say I want to do gifts and shopping, and I want to have, as you can see, a thousand dollars here. If they assign an image to it. I can change that. We'll just go with what the image that they have. And uh, next step, it asks you where will you, where will you save for this goal and options. So this is how one of the ways that Mint makes money. So the first option they give me is I need an, I need to open a new account for this goal, and obviously they have a suggestion. So this FNBO Direct Online Savings is obviously one of their business partners, and every time that they refer somebody to um, to this uh, institution that institution pays them uh, a referral fee you can go ahead if you've got savings accounts listed you can go with that or you can go ahead and say uh, I'll choose an account later so if uh, you go with that option then obviously it'll have to wait until you've linked an account to it and then this page shows you what, what your plan date is if uh, it's a year from now you know the monthly contribution will be eighty three dollars so let's say i wanted this to be for christmas 2017 this year so you need to contribute a hundred dollars a month and uh, how much of how much of that have you contributed zero because we're just setting it up so we'll go ahead and save that and close and it will do some number crunching and pull up a uh, yeah, summary go my computer's running a little slow so here we go The goal is highlighted over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to the next next tab, which is the trends. And basically, if this was linked to my actual live accounts, what it would do is it would show you how your money is working every month. So it will show you what categories your money is is is, uh, is going to. It'll it'll show you what your um, how your assets are over time, how your assets are growing. So it's basically basically a financial tool, more or less.
um, built into into Mint uh, investments. We'll come over here and we'll look at the investments tab. And um, since I don't have a brokerage account associated with it, they will go ahead and suggest Fidelity, which is another one of their marketing partners. <laughs> and then if you go to the Ways to Save tab, it will give you different options. So what it does is it looks at your accounts and says, hey, if you've got X number of credit cards, you could probably go with this credit card, which has a lower balance, and it would save you that amount of money. So Chase Freedom, the annual fee, cash back. And what you always need to be careful about whenever you look at these offers is right here. This is where you know how they say the devil is in the details. These are the details you need to worry about. So look at this. The ongoing interest rate variable on purchasing balance transfers, 15.49 to 24%. That is absolutely insane, which is why I do not have credit cards. We'll come over here to Chase Freedom. Exact same thing. The cash, the blue cash preferred card slightly lower but still absolutely crazy and the the kicker is that you could get a credit card with these same institutions and bank with them so if you put your money in them they'll give you 0.15 percent interest and then they'll charge you 14 percent this is absolute daylight robbery but if uh if you have credit cards and you're into credit cards then you know this is something that you need to take a really good good look at and see just where you stand so that's um, pretty much it as far as um, the internal workings of mint I'm gonna do a little bit more rambling about the um, pros and cons and, and what I think about uh, mint as a whole so stay tuned for that